thank you so much for your great response I got for my Blue Tiger talk as comments, mail and Facebook messages. At Facebook we recently gathered 5000 Schumpelavas as followers and really that's pretty amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate your questions you sent me. Please understand that it would take a lot of time of mine if I would reply to every single person in a private message or in a mail. So I would suggest if you have video related questions, please put it on the command under the video and I will try to reply soon to it. And I hope more people that maybe have similar questions or maybe same questions will have a benefit from that too. I got from your great response that it is mostly desired to go deeper into the crossbreeding world. But in my opinion it is necessary before we will do that and we will do that for sure. It is necessary to do a closer look to another wild-typed shrimp, as it called crystal shrimp. I use the term wild-typed due to the fact this breed to me is the closest to the wild types that someone back were collected in creeks of South China from where they brought into the world trade and at least in our European tanks. Even the species got the simple name to be a bee shrimp in Germany. I will call them from now crystal shrimps to distinguish this species from all other kind of breeds that have the name B in it. Of course I just can talk for my few as a breeder as I'm not a scientist. Mostly I got my experience and conclusion just by doing watching shrimps. Both tiger types and B types have a similar source in the wild, even if it's not the same source. They scientifically were described first as Caridina cephalocantonensis and then just with the appendix of tiger or bee behind the name. Later in 2014 was were renamed. The B type were renamed into Caridina Logomani and the tiger type renamed to Caridina Maria. And so they were distinguished by the name more. And I think it's not too bad to distinguish them. Even they are closely related in my eyes, but they are different species, and so we go from this. Probably the bee name they got from the stripe they have on the back and the solid head that remains at a bee insect. You maybe will agree with me that the thing with the names and the terms that used within the shrimp hobby went really worse in the last years. And so let's do an assumption at this point in this video that whenever we will talk about Caridina Logomani wild types and crystal shrimps wild types, we will relate to this video. I'm conscious about that the most 
videos or whatever articles or interviews are maybe talk different things I will talk but um, let's say we will do it different we don't just repeat the her say and her say and repeat and repeat we will build it up on some experience and things that are obviously to recognize you already watched them for some minutes and for sure you recognize how beautiful the specimens are created already by mother nature the initial spark to the shrimp hobby maybe the fact was when mr suzuki from japan found a red one among thousands of blacks and brownish he picked out this red one and read them and he called this red ones crystal rats and so they have they name from this the red ones called crystal red and the blackish ones called crystal black as we are back to the colors now i want mention that the nature of the color of the pattern is basically the same nature as i explained with the stripes of the tiger in former video the shrimp builds the brown pigments from the three basic colors yellow, red and blue. The crystal red compared are albinos. They doesn't own the ability to express any blue by a gene mutation that sometimes happened in the nature. So it appeared that bright crystal red, this is an recessive trait and when wheat and selected for this trait, you get colonies with same red appearance. But at least I want to talk about the pattern more and even if you see more the black crystals in this video you easily can translate it to red cans as well at the latest one the red specimens reach the tanks of the breeders, they start to breed them as crazy. The appearance of the wild types is determined by a brown main pattern that have some nice thin stripes at the back and a white mask in front of the head and also have some white spots at the tail. Specimens with more white parts were mostly desired and so the pattern development went like this that they have tried to increase the white parts of the crystal shrimps within several generations of breeding they achieved shrimps that are nice banded and they called three and four bands it is to state at this point that this nice appearance of banded shrimps for years was the highest expression that could reached with the wild type crystal shrimps. The highest, very highest level 
an expression was the uh, so-called four band. You see this shrimp here has a small bracket at the tail additionally. My crystals here are not that high grade, they are just for show the development in a base. The alternate black and white bands are very plain and very symmetric and it gives the shrimp a pretty, pretty appearance. They couldn't increase the white parts more because there is a natural barrier for the white color. It means the white pigment and white color development always stayed in the range of the bands and the white mask and some tail spots. The white pigments never touched the head band and the other black bands of the shrimp. This describes the status in Germany which remained that way for a few years until so-called new blood from Japan was inserted in a lot of former wild-type strains. Even if the white bands couldn't get expanded more, there was one exception among uh, the breeds and the exception was that the black bands could get expanded more and some breeders in Germany breed the strains for full covering with the pattern color. Their aim was to decrease the white parts at the body and just left the white mask and the dots at the tail and get a full black or a full red shrimp. They called this kind of breed super crystal. Yeah, and with this solid unicolored crystal, we already reached the end of this talk. I thank you for watching and listening. Until next time.